Hey guys, this is my Sterling Finest Badger Knot, and looking forward to trying him out again. He's got a, some backbone to him, but he's got nice soft tips, uh, so we'll try him out again. I think I raised that knot a little bit, so I'm happy about that. That's gotten me into a better place with it. Now here's a funny thing. The blade I'm going to use today is my Nasset that I've been using for so many shaves. We've got 159 dots on this blade wrapper because that's how many times I've shaved with it. And I picked this Goodwill. This is a Gillette Goodwill. This is my first time shaving with it. I uh, got it in a few weeks ago, and because of the lather games I had, didn't have a, uh, just didn't end up shaving with it. And you know what model number this is? 160. So it's just funkiness that it's the 160th shave with this blade, and I happen to have grabbed, I just realized it just now, five seconds ago, before I hit the record button. So it's kind of funny, 160, 160. All right, uh, we'll talk more about the razor in a little bit. The uh, I got some great samples a while back, a few weeks ago. Um, and this is Holy Cow Padre Leon, the tallow soap. And it's got, uh, it's got some florals. It's also got some bergamot and neroli, which are kind of in the orange family. Just recently learned that the bergamot is made of the the rind, the orange part of the rind of the uh, the fruit, and uh, and so it's that's what it's, it's very zesty. Now the neroli I think is the orange in the orange family. I've got a uh, quarter teaspoon of the sample. This is kind of how you have to lather samples. And off camera, I will finish spreading that around in the bowl, cleaning up my spoon. You don't need to watch me do that. And uh, I've got my, my badger brush soaking. Some badgers don't need to be soaked, in my opinion. There's a few that do. I usually do anyway, just for grins. It seems to work better for me. But let's, uh, let's go ahead and put the blade in. Now this... Um, had a little bit of a uh, uh, patina on this head and, and it kind of looked weird and so I went ahead and just with lightly with some chrome polish and a, uh, a rag I just worked on it and it came out great and obviously this is an open comb razor and you can it, it has that typical tech ball end handle pretty standard cap Except look at the sides. It comes down like that. So this is definitely not a tech cap. And then once we take off the handle. And you can start to see some differences. The Goodwill. It has these diamond pieces designed to posts. Designed to hold the razor blade. And underneath you can kind of see the relief of that diamond. Uh, part of it. You've got these cutaways in the corners. And then here's a cap. Now that's way different from the other caps, like from old types or techs. Sure, the other ones have the uh, the posts on the four corners, but look at these. You know, of course, they had to make room for these posts here, so they had to have these relief areas. So this is what makes it a Goodwill. And this is a Model 160 Goodwill. Now, I think from some reading, they were just kind of throwing parts together. And so there's a lot of variation. Well, one thing that also ended up with is a lot of flexibility. It is very easy for this razor blade to be misaligned. Okay, so let's put it together and align it up. The exposure on this razor when I put in a sample blade also looked pretty crazy so 
um, that'll be interesting to see as well. Now, because of these cool four posts in the corners, it holds the blade exactly in the right place relative to the top cap, but not like you saw relative to this most likely, but let's just see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna take the top cap, put it down on here. It does restrict the blade a little bit, which is cool. Because those diamond patterns, the diamond posts are going into the blade, and then the four corners of the blade are into the posts on the top cap, so it's it's not as loose as it looked like earlier. It's gonna move. Yeah, actually, it's pretty quick to to get it right. That's a surprise. That's interesting. The blade actually acts as a part of the alignment process because it joins the four posts of the top cap and the two posts of the base plate. It acts as kind of a media a link between those two, and so it was actually pretty easy to do that with. Now let's look at the exposure here. That looks like a lot of exposure. The blade sticking out past the top cap and the base plate there. In a way, that's good for this shave because I missed yesterday's shave, so I've got two days of growth. All right, so I'm going to pause you while I spread that soap out, soap sample out, and I'm going to splash my face with some water. All right, so as usual, shake a lot of the water out of my brush because this is not as kind of dense. There's a lot of hairs, and so it can hold a lot of water. And then there we spread the sample around. Now this uh, soap is the tallow formula from holy cow you have a vegan formula as well of a lot of their soaps i don't know about this one specifically neroli there's some florals um, the heart notes have some vetiver and there might be some vanilla in there okay, don't know about that one don't hold me to that but there's a, some amber and something else that I know that I usually often enjoy kind of in the heart note zone. So it's got some interesting things, some things that I definitely know that I like. Some pedigree in the top note. I think that's kind of a floral scent, or at least in the floral kind of family. Not sure about that one though. So this one we've got kind of an early paste, very kind of dry. Go ahead and put in one teaspoon. And as this location does have hard water. But most soaps these days are pretty hard water, water tolerant. filled up the syringe and used it all up. So that means two teaspoons are in the lather. And as usual, I don't, and I've said this several times, I, I don't expect you to measure your water. But for those of you who are having trouble, big trouble with your lather and you just can't get it right, maybe these measurements can offer some help to you. What's probably a better idea is to take your brush and like I do, bring it up out of the water instead of shaking off almost all the water. If you're going to use the same brush each time, two shakes, try that and then go into it and see how that, uh, if that shortcuts you to a good lather. If it's too little, then maybe don't shake it out at all. If it's too much. Uh, water, then you try four shakes or, you know, adjust. See what you can come up with. And I think that's a very pragmatic uh, system. But since I change brushes so much, the shake method is going to vary the, the, uh, the amount of water that I have per brush. And that's not going to be consistent for you. 
the, the floral coming up to my nose, but it's got that zest of the orange with it too. I like that, I think. I know it's going to be a good performer because holy cow just is that. So let's fill it up again. And let's see. Put in one more teaspoon and that may be all we need. See how it's behaving. Let's take a look. Kind of longish peaks. There's some elasticity there. Looks like I have not overwatered it. Look at that nice stretch, nice long peaks. That looks good. Let's try that. All right. Get my face wet again. And let's start working the lather in. I have used my Elite Manchurian brush lately and my which since I lofted it up a little higher in the handle I like it a lot and then I've also used a similar brush to that kind of as a comparison my Maggard's SHD super high density and I like that brush a lot too so now I can compare the three more directly this guy seems to have more backbone than either of those other two and they've kind of been used similar amounts so I think it's a fair comparison because they both they all should be kind of broken in about the same number of uses Lather feels good. We don't need a super thin, uh, super thick layer like a Santa Claus beard type of thing. This is maybe a really aggressive shave. It'll be interesting to see. I do have another razor standing by if it's too aggressive. This is an old blade too. I had discovered with my fat boy that I get a more comfortable shave instead of kind of equal uh, pressure on the top cap and the base plate here. I raise the handle out a little bit to sometimes we call that riding the top cap a little bit. So let's see what happens here. Never used this razor before. I was I wanted to get a Goodwill, and I'd heard that this one was a really good razor. I think maybe I heard that from people who love aggressive razors. I don't know. Sometimes you have to think about the source. And yeah, this is quite aggressive. But like I said, I'm riding the top cap. Now, of course, for those of you critically critical thinkers, scientific method, mindful kind of folks. This is not a fair test for this razor because it is a 160 use blade we're talking about here. And so um, if I get kind of a rough shave from this particular shave, I'm not going to count it against the razor. Well, this 
blade exposure is certainly mowing through the hairs. Got to be careful with it. So I'm definitely going to try to stick with a with the grain or close to it pass and open the handle up a little bit more than I usually do to keep kind of riding the cap like I was talking about. Well, my face feels good so far. Let me rinse. All right, let's uh, have at it again. One thing aggressive razors sometimes do to me is they don't feel too bad after the first pass. But then the aggression kind of builds up. Not, not too easy to keep this brush in a, a light splay. The other two, the SHD for Maggard and the um, Manchurian, are, have gotten that way now that I've raised them up. Maybe, maybe I didn't raise this one yet. I thought I did. So we may start to see the aggressive uh, harshness of this particular shave build as the passes go on, but I'm going to try to have just a light touch and I'm going to play it safe and do the with the grain pass again because I just feel the roughness and the possibility of issues Hear my toilet gurgling. Uh, looks like a repair is coming up soon. Again, focusing on riding that top cap. And that means having kind of more pressure or more of the top cap surface touching my skin along with the blade and maybe less pressure for this uh, open comb for the base plate. Again, sticking with a conservative direction in my shaving here. And this is actually pretty comfortable. Yeah, all right. Well, I did it. I don't know if there are smoother Goodwills out there or if they're all kind of aggressive like this. We'll see. I don't have any bleeders yet. Maybe that's a testimony, a testament to this, this smoothed out blade. 160 uses is going to be a smoothed out blade. I dare say I... I might be afraid to use a fresh, sharp blade with this razor. All right. Third pass. And this may be, maybe a little bit more than the right amount of lather because I like to have a little bit extra. And there's kind of two passes in there probably. So it looks like the... Uh, quarter teaspoon and I could back it off just a little bit. The scent here is available to you as you're shaving which is nice because I, I like it a lot. I like it when the florals are are supporting characters and, and these other uh, the zesty orange and those sort of things um, really come into play and, and the florals balance them out. Amber sweetens things up, keeps things from being too harsh. So I'm happy with the strength of this one. Could probably use it to be a little more. So I'd say right now maybe it's a three or four. Pretty light. Uh, I'd say it's definitely a four or a five when I am lathering up. There's more action. Uh, air is being moved around and so it's natural to get more of a, 
a scent when you're doing that. All right, third pass. This time I'll do cross grain on my cheeks. Just focusing on a light touch and since the handle angle is not a natural one for me, I'm, I'm just constantly thinking about that so that I don't revert back to kind of old habits. Smaller strokes can help you be more mindful of that. The neck is definitely an area where these little nicks and bites can happen. Much more likely to nick my neck than anywhere else. Uh, I would venture to say most people are probably the same way because it's a concave surface with rolls and more flexible skin than the convex surface of your cheeks. Lather terrific, really enjoyed it. I will give you a warning that before polishing with any kind of uh, polish that have any, has any sort of an abrasive, uh, you got to watch out because some of the old finishes, uh, don't believe on this one, but some of the old finishes have, were kind of a gold wash and so the layer is very thin and so any kind of abrasive could just kill that. And so make sure you either know yourself what you're doing or do some searching online. Ask some qualified people before you use abrasives to uh, brighten up an old razor. The good news is, though, if you make a mistake, these old guys, they have brass underneath. And so, worst case, you end up with a cool-looking brass razor. But so, uh, you usually will want to try to keep the finish that you do have. As usual with many aggressive shaves, I was more tentative in my trouble spot area. And I'm happy to report that I don't have any irritation there right now. Face feels good. Doesn't really even feel tender. Um, and so that's great. Uh, I feel like if I were to keep pursuing cutting some of these hairs a little bit more, I might get into trouble. And so I'm just going to drop it. So, uh, But it's a, it's a decent shave. Even if I were to stop now and go to work, most jobs not have a problem with this level of closeness. And so that sense, it's a, in that sense, it's a win. Uh, let's see what kind of post shave we want to do. I definitely wanted something on the skin building side, nourishing side, instead of uh, a, an alcohol based splash that just has alcohol and scent. Uh, and I think this scent might actually be uh, very compatible. Pre de Provence, it's a French soap, and the original is a sage scented soap. But this is the number 63, and so it's kind of warm and spicy. I like it a lot. I'm not a sage guy. I have the soap for this, and it's a great buy. Because it is a hard puck that will last a very long time. I should have left my skin just a little bit uh, wetter. Help this spread, but it's working out. I'm trying to spread it. Um, if you have sensitivity and you can get some irritation on your skin, uh, my tip is to spread it with the grain of your hair growth. And it keeps keeps me from getting some irritation. There we go. That worked out just right. Oh yeah, that's a good scent. Yeah, that does go. That goes well with the Padre Leon. Good match, good pairing. All right, um, so I showed you how much lather. I have left about two passes left over and I used about three teaspoons of water. And I think that's about the perfect amount for a nice wet lather that gave me lots of slickness and protection and felt great on the face. Felt good in the rinses as well. So I'm a happy camper.
160 uses on that NASA blade. How about that? Um, we'll see how many more he's got in him. All right. You take care. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves. I hope there was something here for you. Uh, you take care. Good night.